August 22nd, 2018. It's game two of a series between the Philadelphia Phillies and Washington Nationals. The Phillies set the tone early with a three-run first inning, but this game ended up turning into a back-and-forth showdown that came down to the wire. With the Nationals being one out away from a frustrating loss, Juan Soto kept the game alive to allow the potential winning run to come to the plate. Ryan Zimmerman. If there was anyone that could send this crowd home happy, it was the man Nationals fans called Mr. Walkoff. Ryan Zimmerman, high fly ball, deep right field, home run! It's a walk-off homer for Ryan Zimmerman! Like the number on his jersey, Zimmerman had hit his 11th career walk-off home run, which placed him on an exclusive list alongside some of baseball's greatest players. Just a few years later, in 2022, Zimmerman's number 11 became the first to be retired by the Nationals. While he never had an MVP-level season on par with Bryce Harper or the immense hype of Steven Strasburg, Zimmerman was a constant presence in the Nationals' line lineup for many years, and today we're going to learn why he's known as Mr. National. Shout out to these comments for suggesting this video, and if you have an overlooked player or team hero you'd like me to cover, leave it down in the comments. On September 29th, 2004, it was announced that the Montreal Expos were relocating to Washington DC in 2005. The city wasn't exactly inheriting a great team as the 2004 Expos went 67 and 95, but despite finishing in last place, the Nationals actually went 81 and 81 in their inaugural season. Also, the Expo's terrible 2004 season meant the Nationals received the number four overall pick in the 2005 draft. Typically, MLB draft picks don't reach the majors for at least a few seasons, but the Nationals selected the most MLB-ready player in the draft, University of Virginia third baseman Ryan Zimmerman. Drawing lofty comparisons to Mike Schmidt, Brooks Robinson, and Scott Rowland due to his potential gold glove ability, the scouting reports weren't kidding about his MLB-ready status as after just 67 games between single-A and double-A, Zimmerman was called up and made his debut on September 1st, 2005. In his 20-game stint, he impressed the team and the fans alike, which earned him the role as the 2006 opening day third baseman. Well, it didn't take too long for Zimmerman to start making a name for himself. On June 18th, 2006, the Nationals were facing the Yankees in front of their biggest home crowd ever. Breakout Yankees star Chen Ming Wong possessed a one-run lead heading into the ninth inning and was on the verge of a complete game. That was until pinch hitter Marlon Anderson got on base, allowing the 21-year-old rookie to step up to the plate. The first walk-off Zimmerman had hit at any level of baseball. A hit with nearly a 79% shift in win expectancy. Good enough to be the 10th highest WPA shift of the 2006 season. However, what if I were to tell you that this wasn't Zimmerman's only placement in the top 10? Zimmerman! Get up! Left field! Get up! On July 4th, down 4-3, Zimmerman hit a walk-off three-run home run, outdoing his previous walk-off with a near 83% WPA. If you watched Mike's recent video on the Marlins, you would know this was a team filled with talented young players, one of whom was shortstop Hanley Ramirez, who would go on to win the NL Rookie of the Year over Zimmerman. Still, with 20 home runs, over 45 doubles, and double-digit stolen bases, Zimmerman was one of only two rookies ever to have this stat line. The other was Fred Lynn in 1975, who not only won Rookie of the Year, he was the American League MVP. It was safe to say Zimmerman's future was incredibly bright. In 2007, Zimmerman was one of only seven players to play 162 games. And while his offensive production slightly decreased, this was the beginning of his tenure as one of baseball's best defensive third basemen. Also, I can't forget to mention his biggest moment of the season, another walk-off home run against the Marlins. Except this time, it was a grand slam. You may notice that there's basically no one in the stands, and that's 
that's because there were over three hours worth of rain delays. Considering the fact this mid-May series was the Nationals' first series win of the 2007 season, you can imagine Nationals fans didn't have much to cheer for that year. However, with Nationals Park opening in 2008, it was a new chapter for the franchise, one that began in unforgettable fashion. Ryan Zimmerman's fourth career walk-off home run was the first home run ever hit in Nationals Park, a script that couldn't have been written any better. However, the rest of the year was far from a storybook season. The Nationals had the league's worst record thanks in part to Zimmerman missing a couple months with a shoulder injury, although this meant they were given the number one overall pick and the opportunity to select one of the most hyped up prospects ever, Steven Strasburg. Considering Zimmerman signed a five-year extension early in the 2019 season and then went on to make his first all-star game, win a silver slugger and a gold glove, the Nationals had a promising future. He definitely deserved to finish higher in the MVP race considering he was one of only five National League players with at least seven war, but it was an incredible season nonetheless. He had established himself as one of baseball's best young hitters and 2010 was even more proof of this. His 142 OPS plus tied for the seventh highest in the National League. With two Two silver sluggers in a row and two more walk-off home runs within a month of each other, Zimmerman had proved himself as not only a premier hitter, but defender as well. Between 2007 and 2010, Zimmerman was a top defensive third baseman on par with Beltre, Roland, and Longoria. Unfortunately, after 2010, it took quite a long time for him to reach this level of success again. In 2011, Zimmerman was sidelined for a couple months with a torn abdominal muscle, and when he did play, it wasn't quite at the level of the previous two seasons. Although the front office was confident he'd eventually bounce back, so he was given a six-year, $100 million extension ahead of the 2012 season. The $16.7 million AAV was the most for any third baseman behind Alex Rodriguez. The 2012 Nationals were projected to be a bubble team that could make the playoffs under the right circumstances. No one could have predicted the type of season they ended up having. A league best 98 and 64 record. Zimmerman wasn't the main source of offensive production like in previous seasons, but his contributions were certainly appreciated nonetheless, notably in the NLDS where he led his team in OPS by a healthy margin. However, the Nationals ended up losing the series in heartbreaking fashion. Still, this was a great foundation for the team to build off of. That was until they failed to reach the playoffs in 2013. Zimmerman certainly wasn't at fault as he had a near identical season to 2012, but he was dealing with a major problem. In April 2012, Zimmerman received cortisone shots to manage his right shoulder inflammation. He spent some time on the IL, but the pain wasn't going away and he was struggling on the field. Then in late June, he received another cortisone shot and it worked instantly, leading to a hot streak and a successful season. However, the risk with cortisone treatment is that while it numbs the pain, the affected body part continues to deteriorate and can lead to long-term damage. So while Zimmerman was pain-free, his shoulder was changing the way he threw the ball. Between 2012 and 2013, the errors increased, DRS and UZR diminished, and by 2014, it was clear his shoulder was hurting his ability to be an everyday third baseman. So young big leaguer Anthony Rendon took over, and Zimmerman spent some time in left field, first base, and third base. Unfortunately, he only played 61 games in 2014 due to a multitude of non-shoulder related injuries. So he was relegated to a pinch hitter in the 2014 NLDS, where for the most part, the team's bats fell quiet. Then in 2015, while he moved to first base permanently, it wasn't enough to keep Zimmerman off the IL for a large portion of the season with a foot injury. As for 2016, not only did he deal with more injuries, it was his worst offensive season ever. His NLDS performances were promising, but his future was uncertain. Well, in 2017, he responded to everyone's concerns. Now here's Zimmerman deep to left center, and it's 4-0, and Ryan Zimmerman becomes the all-time franchise leader in home runs. Zimmerman's 2017 career resurgence led to a career-high 36 home runs and his second career all-star selection. 
As for the postseason, Zimmerman's go-ahead three-run home run in Game 2 of the NLDS led to a series tie, but the Nationals ended up losing in the end. Regardless, this season proved that Zimmerman's days as a premier hitter were far from over. At least, that's what we thought. In 2018, once again, he was sidelined for a couple months. He had a solid season, but the loss in home run power was significant. With the Nationals missing the 2018 playoffs, Bryce Harper signing with the Phillies after the season, and more key players becoming free agents in one more year, 2019 not only seemed like the Nationals' final chance for a championship, but for Ryan Zimmerman as well. The team was certainly going to decline his 2020 team option, and unless he's offered a contract from a contender, Zimmerman was likely ending his career without a championship. In late May 2019, the Nationals were well out of the playoff race, and Zimmerman dealt with a foot injury that didn't fully heal until late in the season. But miraculously, the Nationals ended up pulling themselves into a wildcard spot, leading to a win or go home game against the Brewers. But heading into the eighth inning down by two, the Nationals were put into a tough spot. However, with two outs and a runner on base, Zimmerman came off the bench and did what he's done his entire career delivering in clutch situations. Following Zimmerman's single and an Anthony Rendon walk, Juan Soto hit a go-ahead single, which led to the Nationals winning the game and advancing to the NLDS against the 106-win Dodgers. Not exactly a favorable matchup, but the Nationals held their own. Following a Game 1 loss, the Nationals were up by one in the eighth inning of Game 2. Then Zimmerman hit a leadoff double and eventually scored a crucial run, leading to a series tie. Two games later in Game 4, Zimmerman's three-run home run led to a win and a series deciding Game 5, which the Nationals ended up winning. In the NLCS against the Cardinals, the Nationals made easy work of them with a four-game sweep. Ryan Zimmerman and the underdog Nationals had made it to the World Series, but now they had their biggest challenge yet. The Houston Astros, one of the best squads assembled in recent baseball history. Although Zimmerman wasn't phased by them. Plantfish, is early in the year, and here's one into center. Back at the wall. This was the first World Series home run in Nationals history, and it was the beginning of a comeback that not only led to a Game 1 win, but a World Series championship as well. 3-2. Here it is! The Washington Nationals are world champions for the first time in franchise history. Ryan Zimmerman, Mr. National, was now a World Series champion. Manager Dave Martinez said, I'll be honest with you, my eyes got a little watery for him. He waited a long time to be in this position. The way this game went is the way our whole season went. We never gave up, kept fighting. Uh, couldn't be more proud of this group of guys. What a story, what a, uh, what a fun year, man. Zimmerman retired after the 2021 season, marking the end of an era in Nationals history. In Cincinnati or Boston or Milwaukee, Zimmerman's career would have been part of franchise history. In Washington, Zimmerman shaped franchise history. Even including the 30 plus year history of the Expos, Zimmerman leads the franchise in many career stats, such as games played, hits, doubles, home runs, RBIs, and of course, walk-off home runs. Unfortunately, injuries forever altered Zimmerman's career, but his competitiveness, loyalty, and clutchness will forever be remembered by Nationals fans. In the near future, more Nationals will have their numbers retired, but there is only one Mr. National, and that player is Ryan Zimmerman. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did, and subscribe for more content just like this. Thanks for watching.